Hi, Roman's Revenge here. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, uh, this is a uh, Ninth Age Battle Report. I'm going to talk through a uh, recent battle I played. This is actually for a eight-man tournament called Who Ate My Wings? And this is round two, as the title describes. I played Michael Shino, uh, who's played Warriors of the Dark Gods, and I play Emperor of Sonstal. This was a really tough round. Uh, we were going up against the... <laughs> Uh, just a really good team, and we knew it was going to be a rough round, uh, so it was it was really difficult to pair. Um, this is my list. You can look at it if you want. I'm not going to point anything out. Uh, if you want to listen to my analysis of my list, you can listen to my first video for Who Ate My Wings, round one. Go look at listen to that. If you haven't listened to that already, stop this video and go listen to that. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, this is the list I was playing against, Warriors of the Dark Gods. Uh, I actually, going into this battle, I ranked this as a yellow. Um, let's see, things I, reasons why I ranked it as a yellow. Okay, I ranked it as a yellow mostly because, um, the big things. He has two big Feldric Elders that are res 6. Uh, I do not have cannons in this list. And Feldric Elders have either armor 3 or armor 4, so Unerring Strike was not going to be... It was still going to be useful, but not as useful, because he still gets an armor save. Um, I do have two mortars and rockets, but rockets only wound on fives, mortars wound on fours. And I have to hit first. Um, so those are going to be a little difficult. Also, he's got this Barbarian Chief on a Shadow Chaser, so I knew he was going to use him as a fast cowboy. And he's got a one-up save, difficult to deal with. Also, he has Chosen Lord with a 1-up save, I think it is. Difficult to deal with. Um, also, this Dark Chariot with a 1-up armor save. Difficult to deal with. Um, so that's why I marked it as a yellow. Because I don't have a ton of AP in my army. Um, that's about it for pre-game uh, analysis. I wasn't really worried about these Warriors. Units of 10. Barbarians, I wasn't super worried about either. Um, I guess uh, my strategy going into it, I'd been thinking all week about it, and I was going to fire mortars, mortars and rockets and magic missiles like Unerring Strike at the Feldric Elders to take them out first because they have high mobility in his list. And I thought I could kind of handle everything else in combat. But as I was looking at his list again in the hours beforehand, I realized that I really did not want this Battle Shrine to get into combat with me because it has D6 plus 2 or something. Grind attacks? D6 plus 1? Something like that. I did not want to face grind attacks. And this is res 5. So I decided right before the battle I was going to use my rockets to fire at the Battle Shrine. And the cha Chaos Chosen Lord on the War Dice, if he was not in there. I was going to use rockets to target the Chariot, the War Dice, and the Battle Shrine. And um, use mortars and missiles to focus on the Elders. So, that was my battle plan, basically. Uh, the scenario was King of the Hill. And Frontline Clash on Map 1. So, guess who won the Roll for Sides? He won the Roll for Sides. He took the top, which I was actually a little surprised about, but it makes sense. Uh, he took the top, and then he chose this hill as his objective marker, uh, which I actually found perplexing. Uh, so I was on the bottom, and I chose the ruins. And I'd analyze this, and going into the game, even if I won the rule for sides, I was actually going to take the bottom, because um, my thought process with this army is when, you, when I have this much artillery and shooting, I need to have a big open area. See how much open area there is here? So for him to advance on me, yeah, he's, he can get cover from the from the fields, and yeah, he can use the impassable to dance around it. But in between the impassable and my lines, there's still a decent amount of distance that he's gonna come have to come out into the open, and he's gonna be under fire before he can reach me. If I took the top, he, the ruins provide better cover for him than the field and the forest, and he could actually hide a lot of stuff between the hill and here it just wasn't as good so that's why i was fine with the bottom and uh yeah so i dropped all to go first i still go back and forth on whether or not i should drop to go first um because handgunners can't really shoot the first turn uh 
This is something I thought of uh, also in a few hours or the day before the battle. Uh, originally, I wasn't going to put anything over here. I was going to like corner. I was going to corner more than I did. Um, but I decided, uh, depending on where his objective marker was, if he was on the top, I was going to put my spears over here to put him in position to grab the objective late in the game. So there you have it. Um, yeah, I also played around with some artillery beforehand. Once you know, if you know what the map is, it's good to just play around with different deployments. Um, so I played around with the different deployments, and I figured out, you know, how to minimize the effect of this impassable. I figured out I was actually going to put another artillery piece or piece of rocket over here. Same thing if I was on the top. That way, I basically figured out that if if um, he was going to use the impassable, which he was. Uh, I was going to be able to target his creature. He wasn't going to be able to completely hide from my artillery is the point. I was going to be able to have at least two artillery pieces that could target anything hiding behind the impassable. And depending on the angle, I could probably actually hit it with three. So that's why I deployed this way. Um, so yeah, that was my drop. All right. Um, then he dropped this way, of course, measuring ranges so that, you know, his monsters and chariot is over here so that I can't actually target them with mortars and rockers on the first turn. Um, don't know if there's anything I could have done about that because if I put the artillery here, then the impassable blocks me, right? So I think I had to deploy the way I did. I probably actually could have made it a little bit more of a corner, but... I wanted to be able I wanted to be able to have artillery on my right flank that could still target stuff and I wanted to be able to protect that artillery. I also wanted to have my divination master on the right flank because I knew he would put his monsters on the right flank to hide behind the hill and the impassable and I needed to be able to target them. So if I had my divination master on the right flank, even if he's hiding behind the impassable from the artillery on my left flank, I still have a mortar, and I can move my divination master up and target, you know, 24 inches or 21 inches um, unerring strike and try to kill stuff that's hiding behind the impassable. So that was my thought process. I'm not confident in my decision to put my prelate over here, but I decided to. I, it was a tough call. Uh, maybe the prelate should have gone over here behind these flagellants on the left flank, but I don't know. It's, it's hard to make that call. So here we go. Um... These are his warriors in the middle, his uh, Chosen Lord and Sorcerer are in his Barbarian block, which he deployed this way, I assume mostly to minimize the effect of Mortar hit, since I can only hit a maximum of 6x2, which is 12 guys, instead of hitting, if he was 5x5, five five, I could have hit 25 guys. Alrighty, um, and then he's got Warhands in the back, Barbarian, Cowboy, Battle Shrine, there we go. So in my first turn, uh, so actually he has Vanguard on this Barbarian, so he Vanguarded him up just behind the Impassable, so I couldn't, I could only really see him with this Mortar, I couldn't really see him with anything else. Uh, so what did I do? Uh, I think this was a little bit of a mistake. I actually, I was a little overconfident in my, um, shooting ability of my handgunners, and I actually moved them into the Ruins. I think I should have kept them behind the Ruins. <laughs> Because I wanted to, I wanted to force dangerous terrain tests on anyone that I'm um, trying to get in there, but I I moved him up, and I think that was a mistake. But it is what it is. I also moved my uh, mage over so that I could cast spells on his barbarian, and that's about it. I didn't really move up. Oh, I guess I slightly moved my um, flagellants up. All right. Um. So on magic phase, see, I got the one card. Um. I was able to get. I cast altered sight, and he let that through. So that way I could minimize the effect of uh, moving on them, uh, on my handgunners. And I also was able to get Quicksilver Lash off onto his Barbarian Chief. And I only did, let's see, where was my roll? Four to four. So you can see my roll. I rolled four dice, he rolled four, and I was able to get it off. But I only rolled a one for the, um, it does D3 plus one hit. So I only did two hits to him, right? If I roll average, I actually do three, and then he basically, um, I have a good chance of killing him. But I only did two wounds to him. So, uh, that was a little bit unlucky. I could have actually killed his Barbarian Chief right out, but I wasn't able to. Um, shooting, because I couldn't shoot his big stuff, I used my rockets and my handgunners. Well, my handgunners targeted these uh, Forsworn, because I really didn't want to face them in combat. Um, and I think the rest of my artillery just kind of missed or bounced off. So, 
That's all that happened. Uh, his turn, he just pushes forward, which is what I expected. I do want to know, I actually expected him to deploy everything on the left and be as close to my deployment as possible and just push forward. Because, honestly, he could have deployed in such a way with his Feldrakes that I only would have had one turn. He could have, once he saw where my magic was, he could have put his Feldrakes on his hard left flank. And yeah, all my artillery could have fired at him on one turn. We could have just pushed forward and then charged on turn two. And I wouldn't have been able to cast spells on him. So I was actually really surprised he did this. Anyway, this was his movement. Um, what happens? Oh, uh, magic. He was able to um, cast magic. He actually commented early on turn one. Um, magic. He took out 15. No, not 15. I have nine left. He took out eleven. He took out eleven handgunners with um with um I think he had two different magic spells and he took out eleven handgunners. Um, he actually commented to the rest of his teammates. He was like, uh, he was worried about my shooting, but he said his magic was killing more than my shooting. So there you have it. Warriors have magic missiles that kill more than empire shooting. It's confirmed. Um. All right, so on my turn, you can see I'm really not moving because I don't want to get any closer to him. I thought about moving my flagellants up, and then I realized, nope, I don't want to uh, have him charge me. I just want to sh shoot him. So I cast Altered Sight on my rocket, which I realized I should have cast an Altered Sight on this rocket on turn one. Because of this rocket on turn one, I have three shots, and it rolled three fours. I needed fives to hit. And I rolled triple fours. If I had cast Altered Sight on the first turn on this rocket instead of on these handgunners, then all three of the shots would have hit. And I could have actually uh, like taken out those four sworn from the beginning of the game. So uh, I realized that I should have been using Altered Sight on my artillery and not on my handgunners. But it was a turn too late. But that's something I learned from this game. So there you go. Um, and then I was actually able to get Unerring Strike off on this Feldrake and did several wounds. Um, looks like that's basically all I did with magic. Um, I had misfires. That's why I have wounds on these guys. I have misfires. But I was able to keep whittling down this Forsworn a little bit. And then he comes forward. So this is what I'm talking about, right? This is his turn too. Well, he already is chomping on this flank. Um, I don't have a lot of room to move. This is the problem with this list. These things are, flagellants are bulky. The battle engines are actually kind of bulky. I don't have anywhere to go, right? I'm kind of pinned in because of my playstyle. Uh, right, my spears aren't going to do anything. I've learned that in past games. I can't use them on the Phil Drake. Um... He's actually now within minimum range, so he's got a, a Feldrake here, which I can't wound with my mortar. Um, Alright, so he casts, oh, he casts Word of Iron on this Feldrake. Um, I'm trying to think when I stopped. I was trying to stop Hellfire, because I really didn't want Hellfire to go through. So I was basically trying to stop Hellfire, but then he let, I had to let Word of Iron through. So his Feldrake now has like a two-up armor save. Um, and so I'm in this position, and I'm not sure what to do. So on my right flank, my Flagellants actually charge the Chieftain. Because I figure if he stays, I'll kill him. There's really no chance to survive. I'll kill him. And then I'll overrun into this Feldrake that's wounded. Um, he actually fled, so I, I decided to charge the Feldrake that was healthy because I wasn't sure how else to handle it. This Feldrake that was healthy was closer to my wizard than the wounded Feldrake, and I thought I had a good chance of magic and shooting to actually take out the wounded Feldrake. Well, I guess it does have a two-up armor save, but I didn't want this healthy Feldrake hitting me, right? So that was my logic there. Um, these Flagellants actually charge this first sworn. And they failed. <laughs> they just ended up here. Uh, it was a really bad roll. So anyway, um, magic. I got Quicksilver Lash off and killed this Barbarian Chief. Uh, I wasn't thinking about Word of Iron. I guess I should have cast Quicksilver Lash 
on the Fildrick because it had plus two armor. That was my bad. Uh, yeah, that was my bad. Um, I got that off, and then I actually got Greedy, which I know it wasn't a priority to take him off because he was fleeing, so on the next turn he would have he could have rallied, but he couldn't really do anything. So I could have just ignored him for a turn and focused on this Fildrick, which is what I should have done. Um, and then I got Greedy. I tried to cast d several buffs on the Flagellants. I tried to cast Stars Align and Perception of Strength or and Awaken a Beast, and he stopped all of them. I should have just focused on just, like, push through one spell, because if I get Stars Align off on them, that's a pretty much... That's a, that's a good game changer for this combat. Um, so that was my mistake. Um, and then combat. Well, shooting, my handgunners actually did a number. Look at this. Um, between rockets and handgunners, I actually put four wounds on his battle shrine, which he told me at that point on the next turn he was nervous about charging it. He said if it had two wounds left, he would have charged it, but because it only had one wound left, he didn't want to charge it and face a stand and shoot. So, um, I know it was risky stand shooting at it, but um, yeah. So then in combat, um, I did two wounds to his elder, which was lucky. I wasn't able to wound this Feldrake, though. I was for sh So then on his turn, I was actually certain... This is what I did. He charges his Feldrake into my wizard. He was, I think, only about 15 inches away. And I should have... I had room. I had room to move my prelate over and to move my wizard further over. I could have basically gotten out of his range or at least a lot further away. I was very confident, though... That he would charge my flagellants in the flank. Because in my mind, one Feldrake in the front is not enough. I'm going to eventually beat that Feldrake. But if he has this Feldrake on my flank, I can't really hurt it very well in the flank. And he's going to be able to grind through and actually win this combat, possibly with both Feldrakes still alive. So I actually thought that was a mistake on his part. But he charged my wizard, and I couldn't flee, of course, because I'm right next to the end of the board. So I had to just take it. Um, he also charged his chosen lord out of, um, into my Fajalans. I had to just take that. Um, yeah. And then he just kind of pushes forwards, because he needs, he needs to get guys into my ruins. Uh, and then he moves the chariot over. So he moves his chariot over, probably to help this combat with the Fajalans. Uh... Right. So, let's see. This goes to magic. Magic, he's able to kill more handgunners. And my wizard broke and fled. Uh, I, I, I wasn't, I was just out of, I should have especially moved within 12 inches of my BSB. And I didn't. And so I fled off the board. So now I'm, I lost my Div Master, which was real bad. He's got this Feldrake on my flank. Um, I was able to do another wound to his Feldrake here, which was good. Um, I'm able to do nothing to his Chosen Lord. His Chosen Lord had a one-up armor save. I thought I'd be able to wound it, and no. I didn't think this was a great combat for his Chosen Lord, but he's able to just munch through him. Uh, my turn. So, what do I do? I basically... Oh, I try to charge my... Parent unit into his Warriors. Uh, they fail that, so they basically go nowhere. Um, I move my prelate here, so that I can try to cast spell a spell on his Feldrake Elder, and I'm now out of line of sight. I move my spears up, because now that he moved his chariot this way, my spears are free to go get the objective, and I need to move this turn if I'm gonna go get the objective. And I wasn't sure what to do with this wizard. I... Could have put the wizard into this handgunner unit, but I was afraid that if I did that, I was afraid that the Feldrake Elder would skip this handgun unit and charge straight into my parent unit, and I did not want that. So I actually put my wizard here to try to chaff his Feldrake from charging into my parent unit. I know it's 200 points, and it's by Adept. Uh, yeah. So, uh, then through shooting, I'm actually able to remove the Battle Shrine, which was good, because, again, I did not want those to go in. Uh, in combat, 
I'm actually able to kill his fell drake. And I turned to face his chariot, so at least his chariot's not hitting my flank. Um, and that's it. So he charges his Feldrake into the flank of my handgunners. I I stay because if I flee, I'm gonna flee through my unit. He can then charge my parent unit in the flank. Uh, I just didn't want that. I decided I was gonna hold. I had set that up with my prelate. Um, he charges his chariot into my guys, and he's able to get his warhands around into my mortars. Basically, I don't have much shooting left in this game. Oh yeah, my handgunners uh, fled. My handgunners fled because his warriors were charging me. Um, I actually was able to hold because with, with um, support units, I was able to hold this combat and turn and face him. Um, and... Let's see. And actually, my rocket was able to hold as well because of altered sight and flaming swords. The crew were actually fighting pretty decently. Well, I guess I didn't do any wounds, but they were able to hold. <laughs> I never expected the rocket to hold. Um, now I'm able to charge into his warriors with my parent unit. I'm making sure that my parent unit is still within eight of my light of my support infantry. I push forward with my spears, of course. Now that I don't have to worry about him. And I charge my prelate into the Feldrake because I figure with D6 strength 5 impact hits and with a flank charge, I'll be able to do something. Um, again, my rocket holds. I am able to cast, uh, I think this is the, pl uh, the 5 up Aegis save, Oler's Blessing. I'm able to get this bound spell off. And awaken the beast off on my flagellants. Oops, let me go back. Um, I was able to break. The Feldrake, I think I only did one wound. Actually, I'm not even sure if I did any wounds, but uh, I'm able to break it with combat res, and my prelate ran it down. Of course, now he's within range of a lot of spells, which is bad, but I just wanted to make sure I got rid of that uh, Feldrake. Um, and then I turn and face these guys. I don't know why I have this picture. Um, unfortunately, his warriors are able to hold. I thought with plus 7 combat res, and he only killed a couple of my guys, I'd be able to break him, but he rolled low enough that he stayed. And so that was disappointing. His warrior's held. Um, now on the, on the next turn, he reforms his barbarians, because he needs to go get that objective. Um, he, uh, let's see, his chosen lord keeps grinding down the flagellants. His chariot's actually doing a lot of work against my flagellants over here. I did not expect that. I thought I'd be able to wound him a lot easier. But a one-up armor save is really good. And again, um, we're just grinding away at each other. And even though I keep winning combats, um, he keeps making his break tests. So. Um, my turn, and this is like my final turn. I push my spears up to grab this objective. So at the very least, I know I will tie objective. As long as my flagellants hold, I have four flagellants left. They need to not all die in this turn. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure what to do with my battle altar. I thought about moving it over here, but I actually looked at his spells. And would you know it, all of the like damage spells that a sorcerer had does, don't require line of sight. I, I, with a, with a movement of eight, I wasn't going to be able to get out of his, uh, range. So I decided since I couldn't actually get out of the range of them, I might as well move my prelate to support this combat, which is what I did. Um, so there you have it. He did a number of wounds. He did three wounds with, I want to say, oh, what spell was it? I don't remember what spell it was. Um, I apologize. I don't remember spells that people cast. Um, my mortar was able to kill the chosen. And then that caused his hounds to flee off the board. So my handgunners actually had no one to shoot at. I should have actually oriented them at a slant so that I could shoot the uh, these warriors, but I was I was worried about what was down here. So anyway. Um, so then on his final turn, 
Well, and then, yeah, you can see um, he only killed two flagellants, so I survived. So then it's the last turn. Last turn, he moves his barbarians into the ruins. I'm not able to stop him from scoring. Um, and in combat, his chariot killed off my flagellants. I only did one round to it after all those rounds. Oh, one wound after all those rounds of combat. Um, his, my flagellants over here on the left actually survived the Chosen Lord, but I only have two left. Again, I only did one wound to him either, too. Um, and I was able to break that warrior unit, and I ended up charging into the flank of this, but it's the last round. I don't get to fight this, so. Uh, so there you have it. It ended up a 12-8 for him. Uh, a loss for me. I got 8. Um, I... I guess I'll talk about some analysis. I don't, uh, <sighs> um, so uh, number one, I was, I was happy with an eight. Like I said, I went into the battle. I had marked it as a yellow, which to me, a yellow is an eight to 12, right? Um, and that's what that means to me. And I decided I need to play for that. I know there's a lot of other Americans that will play for a 20. They'll either try to get a 20 or they'll get a zero. And I didn't want to be that kind of a player. I, I marked it as a yellow, and my goal was to get a yellow. I thought I had a good chance of... I thought I actually had a good chance at denying objective. I think I could have played that better to deny objective with my deployment. Um, and I thought I actually had a decent chance with my spears over here to win objective. Which, if I won objective, that actually would have made it 11-9 win for me. Um, so, But I, I was happy with an 8. Because um, it takes a certain skill to be able to... I think I identified that it, it was a yellow matchup, and then I was actually able to play it as a yellow matchup. And that takes a certain skill to get to that point. So um, I was happy about that. I was disappointed, again, in my parry block. Um, I really thought that 50 guys were going to run over 10, guy, 10 warriors. Nope, they did not. Uh, also disappointed in my handgunner shooting. Disappointed in my artillery shooting. One of my teammates after the battle told me that if I had... Uh, I mean, it, there's not a lot I can do about it, especially when playing on UB. I can't affect how the dice go. Um, he said if my artillery had just rolled average, it probably would have been more like a 10-10 or something. Because uh, I had a better chance at, at wounding those fell drakes from afar or something. It is what it is. Um, bigger takeaways uh, about list building that I took away from this... This was a very I didn't I didn't really realize how potent a one up armor save was against my list um, because my flagellants have AP two but that means his guy still had like a three up armor save and uh, it 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 was I didn't realize how good it was so I've been thinking about my list and after this tournament uh, tournament I'm probably gonna tweak it just so that I'll I won't be so I kind of felt helpless against one-up armor save. He just had a lot of one-up armor save, and there isn't a lot I can do about it with my list. Uh, so I felt, I felt I need to tweak something to be able to get more AP in this army. Uh, so that's one big takeaway from it. The other thing that I briefly mentioned, and I want to talk a little bit more about, uh, so it's a 12-8. Let me go, well, I'll just talk about it here. So with my deployment, if you can remember how, back to how I deployed, I guess I could have deployed in a way that really would have prevented him from scoring. I think what I should have done, instead of having my handgunners be in front of the ruins, I should have put either my parry block by the ruins, and I literally, I have enough guys, I literally could have deployed them in a way that I could have just moved them up and covered the whole ruins so that my opponent would have had to kill the unit to score so i think that's what i should have done i should have just either put my heavy infantry swordsman unit in the ruins or my flagellant unit in the ruins and made it so that for him to score objective he needed to kill that unit and i didn't deploy that way so i think i could have actually won objective if i did that just deployed slightly differently um, you can't really do that with any other <laughs> objective, but I guess for King of the Hill, that's something to keep in mind. De if you have a unit, deploy that unit big enough to cover the whole terrain and make it so your opponent has to kill that unit to actually get inside the terrain. 
I didn't have that in mind when deploying, and I should have. So, my bad. There we have it. That's 8 to 12. That's really all my thoughts on this battle. Uh, I'm just going to show you, because someone asked about this last time, about round 1. This is how we did as a team. Um, so I got an 8. Or, no, no, I'm down here. I got an 8. Um, you can see it was a really rough round for the re for the re uh, most of the team. Um, we actually started off pretty strong. Our dwarf player got a 12, and then it, um, I was able to grab an A. Our Vimmer's from grabbed a 7, um, and our uh, Hugh grabbed a 7. And after that, it just kind of it went it went downhill. We got two zeros, and you can't really come back from that. So. Uh, yeah, uh, it was a good team to play against them. I can't, um, I'm not going to pronounce their name. So, anyway, um, we, with that, we ended up, I think we're still in, like, 11th place, 10th or 11th, um, which is still decent. It's only two rounds in. There's still several rounds, but we can still finish pretty well. So, uh, thank you, uh, for being here. Thank you for watching my channel, supporting my channel, commenting, liking, following. Um, that's basically all I have to say. And I just hope that you have a good rest of your week, wherever you are, and whenever you're listening to this, take care.